but we also have 32 filters modeled after famous analog vintage equalizers. You can see in the animated graphics here the phase shifting as we shift the frequencies on the EQ. That is absolutely great. And when a specific frequency is too much relative to the rest of the music, at that point there's the dynamic action. We have a lot to talk about. I think at the end of this video, you will agree with me that this is not just another EQ, but is the most useful feature packed equalizer out there right now and arguably the best EQ on the market. Trust me, I was skeptical too, because how much better a digital equalizer can get, right? But this is actually a real game changer. Kirchhoff EQ, let's get to it. Hello everyone, welcome back to Miss West TV. Hope you're having a great day. Before we start, please check the info box down below for my mixing courses on ProMix Academy, free plugin, special discounts and offers. And of course, if you really want to learn how to mix and master professionally, click the join button down here, become a Mix Best TV member, access the already big and always growing library of full mixing courses on so many different genres, start to finish, mastering courses, special videos, and a lot more. And if the videos aren't helping you and you want to help the channel back, grab some merch. We have some cool t-shirts, hoodie, mugs, pillows, all under the video here. Let's take a look at this. All right, I wasn't kidding when I said there's a lot to talk about because this EQ is pretty mind blowing. I don't even know where to start. First of all, we have the clean and streamlined GUI that we all love. This one is fully resizable, as you can see in real time. Same ease of use of the best EQs out there. So just click anywhere in the line, create a node, move it around, modify EQ settings with your mouse wheel. You have invert phase here, auto gain, and change overall scale, right? Right here. You have a fully customizable FTT analyzer, resolution, speed, range, tilt, show spectrum for input, output, or both. And then we run into the first of many of the features that makes Kirchhoff EQ a different quality from all the other EQs out there. The processing on this plugin is a 64 bit by default, but you can click here and switch it to 170 dB processing. It has by two oversampling and clicking the gear icon, you have all the customization possible. Behavior, knobs, GUI, themes, you can actually create your own theme with your own colors for everything. Sound, you can see it right here, use tight mode, because in the earlier versions of the Kirchhoff EQ, a specific filter structure was chosen to make the low end sound thick and huge. Because you don't always want this by default, they introduced the tight mode. This now comes as a default, but you can disengage it and go back to the thick low end that was the previous design. Next is the favorite tabs. We're going to talk about this later because like I said, there is a lot to see on this EQ. So first of all, the sound. Why this EQ sounds better than other digital EQs? There are several reasons. The first one is what Three Bodies technology calls robust Nyquist match transform. This is an original technology developed for Kirchhoff EQ that has made digital domain frequency response more approximate to its original counterpart without high frequency cramping as in all the other digital equalizer. This technique is applied on all filter types. On Kirchhoff EQ, you can see the chart right here. On Kirchhoff EQ, we have several operating modes. Right now I have selected analog, as you can see, then we have the usual minimum phase, still suitable for most situation. Then we have linear, like many other, and we have for linear, low, medium, high, very, and extreme. But then we have a mix mode. And when you select mix mode, you can see you have a frequency selector here. So let's talk about this and what they did with the linear phase part of this EQ. While all the linear phase filters should sound the same on paper, that's not the case in real life. Some sound better on the lows, some sound better on the highs. They approach this problem in a completely different way that is a little revolution a technology called the Psychoacoustic Adaptive Filter Topology. The filter structures change themselves to best fit what frequency range are you working on it. This makes the linear phase mode sounds better compared to other linear phase EQ in both high end and low end. And you can see it in this test, the first image is quantization noise of raising 60B at 1K of a very famous EQ. And the bottom image is the quantization noise, same settings of the Kirchhoff EQ. You can see absolutely nothing. But let's take a look at that mixed phase mode because it's different than anything else out there. We know the linear phase EQs have a different sound compared to linear phase EQs, which can be problematic sometimes in the low frequency range. Well, mixed phase mode 
solve exactly this problem. You can see in the animated graphics here the phase shifting as we shift the frequencies on the EQ. That is absolutely great. Going back to our EQ, when you select mix mode, so mix between linear and minimum phase, you can select the frequency where that change happens. So these were some of the reasons as to why this EQ is objectively better sounding than other digital EQs, but they have more information on their website if you wanna really dig into the technology and read about it. But let's keep going with the features because we just scratched the surface. There's so much more. So you can click on this little hand here and when you see some resonance in your mix, just automatically catch it and bring it down. We have a MIDI keyboard at the bottom if you want to EQ based on notes and this is particularly useful when you go and start using the absolutely impressive dynamic section of this equalizer. This I think is the most game changer features of all. We have other EQs that have the dynamic functions in it and other dedicated dynamic EQs that have more advanced features, but this beats them all. So you can see I click on this D button here and it opens the dynamic control panel. Here we have two different modes completely independent the below and above threshold, which you can turn on and off individually. This purple line indicates the input source, okay? And then for both below and above, you have a range and a ratio. So if I put the gain at zero and I start raising the range of the below, you can see that every time the signal goes below my threshold, that frequency range gets boosted. The opposite will happen if I use the above range, okay? And you can use both to even out a specific frequency range, like the low end, for example, okay? You have ratios, so you can independently decide how much it will do one or the other actions. That is amazing. For each band, you have attack and release. So if we move this more towards the S's, area and you want to leave alone the fast transients like snare or hi-hats and you want to catch the excess overall energy in that range you lower the attack and you will see it reacts more smoothly right but then we have an absolute crazy innovation which is funny because i talked about this not long ago in a video that i did uh, talking about that one function that limiter number six has the relative high frequency limiter which instead of working on the absolute threshold so when a signal just simply passed the threshold it works by listening to the entire material and when a specific frequency is too much relative to the rest of the music at that point there's the dynamic action here you can do it with every single band because you have an onset and a relative detection system and you can decide how much percentage of each one is controlling the dynamic action for example top end and s's on a full mix like this one you can decide to uh, tame a little bit overall the top end, but then attenuating more aggressively the S's or symbols, for example. This way you can keep a mix open and airy, but keep under control those elements that will be too much in such a precise way. And the onset instead, I will try to give you some example. It focuses on the individual transits inside the envelope, which is again, gives you even more control to fine tune something like the low end or the top end. And for each one, detect and relative, you can pick a completely free side chain. So like I said before, let's say I wanna attenuate some high end on this, track which is a full mix by having the EQ listening to the entire mix so I'm gonna make this really wide all right let's See the difference when I turn the relative all the way up. You see, when the relative is all the way down with these settings, it basically reacts to absolute threshold, right? So every time there's the high end that exceeds the threshold, it brings everything down. S's, stomps, cymbals, snare, whatever it is. 
but if I turn the relative up by listening to the entire track, you can see the blue line, then it's only where that range is so exposed and it's unbalanced compared to the rest of the track. That is genius. And I'm doing an example on a mix that doesn't really need DSing or taming the top end, but you can see how this is gonna help you control tracks. And this makes the Kershaw EQ an absolutely amazing master EQ. I'm super excited to have this now in my toolbox. And the amazing thing is that you can blend this. You can have a 50%, 20%, and same with the onset. And you can target exactly what kind of frequency you want, one or the other, or both, being triggered by. And I gotta be honest, this is every detail-oriented mix engineer wet dream this dynamic section because this gives me exactly the amount of control and all the controls that i wish i had before but guess what this is not it because remember when we talked about that proprietary robust ninquist transform technology to make the digital filters closer to the analog counterpart well here is where that comes in handy because if we take a look at the filters here not only we have the 15 unique fully variable filters. So for example, low pass filter, you have all continuous slope selection and Q, all right, for all the filters. But we also have 32 filters modeled after famous analog vintage equalizers. And you can see you have type E, famous British console we all know and love. You have low pass and high pass filters. You have belts for the low mids, the high mids, all the shelves. Same for my beloved uh, G-series filters and low mids and high mids and shelves. Then we have the British N, famous British equalizer that we all know and love. We have low pass, top shelf, bottom shelves and bell. And you can see here, as soon as you engage it, it has all the characteristics of that EQ, including the slight roll off at the top here. And you can see if I change from this bell, the British N to the G, you can see it changes, all right? It changes the shape, the cue, it changes everything. And then we have the EQ250, legendary Sontic Master and EQ. We have the belts, all right, for it, which are, again, all variable still. Of the same unit, we have the top shelf, as you can see, and the bottom shelf. Then we have the vintage tube. This is one of my favorite. I've been using this EQ for a while, so I already know my favorites. And actually, we'll talk about that because you can select your favorites and put it at the top. We have low cut, high cut, top shelf, bottom shelf for the vintage tube EQ. And the blue again, same thing. You can see it also changes the graphic here at the bottom, so you have a visual. And this goes for every band. If I change to the E, Still, again, it changes the graphic so you recognize immediately what are you using, and it's pretty, pretty cool. And now another great feature of this EQ is the placement. So you can see you can place this as left, right, left, right, mid, side, or mid, side. Let's do that. Let's place this top band in mid, side mode. Let's delete this one and I can show you. So here now at the bottom, you have a slider and it says C, mid, and side. And it's fully variable. It means that if I boost this, my 4 dB, All right, I'm exaggerating just so you can hear, but now you have this fully variable control and slider to apply your boost, your cut, whatever that is, to your mid or your side in percentage. This means you don't have to open two bands, one in mid and one in side, and add like 4 dB at the top on the sides, but only 1.5 at the mid. You have this slider and you can doze the amount of boost or cut that you're applying to whatever either side left and right or mid side that is brilliant i hats off to the guys at three body technologies because this eq is mind-blowing if we have a bunch of nodes like this we can see them all in a panel by clicking this button here and here you have all of them at once. Again, not only DZQ has a ton of features, they are all extremely useful and they are all helping me having a much faster workflow when I EQ. And remember, the mid-side thing that I showed you, that also applies when you use the dynamic section. Let's scratch everything for a second and apply this 
bell here, all right? If I go in dynamic mode, and yes, you can go in dynamic mode with a, a vintage analog modeling as well. I'm gonna contain a little bit. Oh, I'm gonna go relative, like we said, and I like it very much to listen to the whole mix. I'm gonna do a 30-40% on the, on the onset. And then I'm gonna switch this more to the sides. So again, this is just to show you the possibilities that you have with this equalizer. I think it's absolutely crazy what they did here. And there's more, you have a look ahead function. You have an overall sides level. And you have a width control, which is different than the side. you can monitor each channel individually. You want to monitor only the left, only the right, only the mid, or only the side. So again, anything you can possibly want and more. And this is an amazing equalizer and I think it's the absolute perfect combination of enough features to really give you everything that you can possibly need if you're an advanced mix engineer but also we start from a point in which these EQs just sound better technically because of all the things that we talked about at the beginning, not only for the analog emulation and the lack of cramping, but also the crazy thing that they did with a linear phase and minimum phase mixed together and you can select the frequency and basically it will just change the type of EQ used based on the frequency smoothly. That's really cool. And last thing, cause I mentioned it before, if we create a new node, all right, and we take a look at the types of filters. You can see at the top here, I have my favorites. I have my 250 filters, my G-series filters, my vintage tube, and my tone stack and blue, All right, These are my favorite filters from the analog emulation. And here in the settings, you can decide if you want to put your favorite at the top. See, show my favorite types in band control menu. If I click this off, then I have no favorites, right? And you can put whatever you want right there in the favorites. You have all the types here. You can customize this any way you want. You also have, like I said, themes, so you can customize the colors, everything. But I guess this is it for what I generally think right now is the most advanced and complete, hands down, equalizer on the market between the extended dynamic control section all the vintage unit emulated, the sound of it in itself with a new technology, up to 170 dB processing and all the other features they packed on this one, hands down, this is the benchmark right now. Hats off to 3Body Technology for making the Kirchhoff EQ. You will find the link in the info box down below and there's a sale going on at the time of this video. I really didn't think there was much to be improved on what was my previous default for my bread and butter EQ, my default EQ but this was an absolutely welcome surprise. If you liked the video, please don't forget to leave a like and let me know what you think in the comment down below. Click the join button, become a Mix Best TV member if you really wanna learn how to mix and master professionally. Grab some merch, you will find a lot of cool options below any video. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time.